Hey guys, what's up? Physex here, making my first tutorial in Happy Wheels. I'll be making an NPC and try to explain everything I do as best as I can. First thing you want to do is draw the head. It's easier to draw the head first than the body or <laughs> arm or whatever. Well, at least for me, that's what I do. And you also might want to use the Happy Wheels NPCs as a guideline, but it's not necessary. Maybe just for the starters. Then when you have the head, you follow with the neck, obviously. Then we move to body with a nice curve on the back. The body should be big as three heads stacked on each other, approximately. Take a look at the picture I borrowed from the internet. There you can see it clearly. The thigh should be long as two heads, the leg should be long as two heads, and so on. So you might want to google these things, because it's really important, and if you mess it up, people will see it and it will, it will just be wrong. But I also posted the XML of this NPC in the video description, so that might help you a little bit as well. Now let me just fast forward this part because there's not much I could talk about. Okay, so now we have to make the arms, but before that, I selected the whole thing and set it to a brighter color so I could see my mouse. And also, I set the brighter color for the polygon tool so I could see the arms on the body background. Here I start with the shoulder and the biceps. And the biceps should end probably in the area where the ribcage ends, in the body. Or I could say in the middle of the stomach, but that's not actually right. Now you just have to finish the whole arm with a forearm and a hand. And the hand should end probably in the area of pelvis, approximately. You have probably noticed that I'm drawing all these body parts separately. And that is because in the end they will be grouped together with all the shading and interactive shapes and join it together. As in real human body. You don't have to mind the line I'm drawing now. It was just something I drew to help me imagine the NPC in space. Nothing else. So now, when all the body parts are made, I move to coloring and shading. And I will start with the head first. But before that, let me explain how the shading works with the colors. Let's say this is our base color. And we want to have one brighter color and one darker color. And for those who might not know this, this movement up and down is brightness. And having one brighter color and one darker color is usually enough. But you can also use two brighter colors and two darker colors. That way the image looks better or more detailed, but it's not necessary. It's up to you how you decide. One bright and one darker is usually enough. But as a matter of fact, I'll be actually using two brighter and two darker colors for the head. Okay, so let's get started with the shading of the head. The first thing I do, I set the neck color a bit darker and that will be the new base color for the neck and the whole system repeats. Also important thing I do here, I want to have the head overlaying the neck. So what I do, I select the head, copy it and paste it with shift C and shift V. And I also had to adjust the chin, I wasn't really happy about the way it looked. Now the first thing I want to start with is the eye socket and for the eye socket you have to use a darker color and I don't mean the first one, I mean the second one. The way the eye look is important for defining the emotional state. I gave this NPC a really mean look. And now I continue with defining other facial features or facial parts like nose and mouth. And with the mouth I draw on a, s a small dark line and then an overlay shape with the base color because the polygon tool is, is kind of limited with small drawing. Oh and I forgot to mention that for these other facial parts I'm using the first dark color not the second one used with the eye socket. Moving on to defining the cheekbone with a darker color. It's something I really like to do because it helps me imagine the facial parts in space and it gives the face the depth needed. I'm drawing the ear with the brighter color so that I could see it on the background, the base color. It's fine for now and I will fix it, I will mix it 
with darker and base color later. Now I think it's time that our guy here grows some hair, but nothing fancy, just a basic haircut. And now that we have drawn the hair over the ear, we have to select the ear, copy it, delete it and paste it. This whole layering thing gets complicated later when you have a lot of shading involved in the shape that you want to copy and paste. Now it's no problem. These are just some finishing touches with the hair. Adding a darker color under the hair, the first one, and some base color of the hair behind the ear. Let's start with the bright colors on the chin, as if the light source is on the left side, up front to this guy. And the thing with shading generally is that there is always some ambient light. It's not like you would have to calculate the exact light flow or <laughs> something like that. There's never only one light source in real life. Only maybe in one example. Let me give you an example. Imagine an interrogation room with a huge lamp hanging over the table and the whole room is just dark, only that one lamp. Then you would have a bunch of bright colors and one dark, complete black color. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not the only one, the only example. I'm just describing the picture so you would understand. But back to the video because I'm falling behind. What I did there was I made a triangle with a darker color, the first one, as a down eyelid. And a sort of triangle with a complete black color as an eye. Followed by a bright color on the eyebrow, on the tip of the nose. Again, the light shines from the left side. Then the upper lip and the part of the chin. So as you can see, I wasn't really happy with the bright color on the cheek, so I decided to do it again. And also added additional definition of the cheek with the, with the dark color. It's more like defining the muscle under the chin, but now I'm just making it sound complicated. Obviously, since I decided that the light shines from the left side, the right part of the chin, the area under the ear, should be darker. And I'm also adding a dark color to the area between nose and cheek, since that area is further away from the viewer, from me as I draw it. And the nose is partially blocking the light coming from the left side. Finishing up the dark shade on the right side of the chin with a curved line that follows the muscle on the chin. And also addition to the bright shade on the cheek. And the bright shade on the nose and also on the forehead. And now don't forget that so far I only used the first dark color and the first bright color. The second bright color and the second dark color are yet to come. And now as I mentioned before it's time to mix the ear with the base color and the darker color. And I think that anyone can imagine how the ear looks with the ear hole where the darker color comes and the base color mixed in with the rest of the ear especially at the down tip of the ear. And some finishing touches in the area around the mouth with the brighter color to make it look standing out. Since the color of the shade on the right side of the cheek and the neck is the same, I have to define the neck with a darker color. And again, Another finishing touches around the face with the first darker and the first brighter color still so that the final look is acceptable. Many times you find yourself playing around with the colors and tones until you're satisfied with the final look. So this here is exactly what I was talking about, about the annoying part of the layering. So I added the dark shade under the hair, but I want the hair overlaying the dark shade. So what I have to do? I have to select the hair, but if I copy, delete and paste it, that will just overlay the ear. So I also have to select the whole ear with all the shading. And the trick is, you have to select them in right order, or otherwise the game will not know how do you want to have them lined up, in what order, and the layers will just be messed up. Okay, so we are finally moving to shading with the second brighter and the second darker color. And it's really simple. 
the second brighter goes inside the area of first brighter and the second darker goes inside the area of first darker and so on. Actually not so on, that's it, the whole thing. But you still want to have the first colors, the first darker and the first brighter visible. Don't overlay them with the second brighter completely. Using these second colors give the image the right look. The whole purpose of shading is giving a flat image that feel of depth. If this first brighter, second brighter, first darker and so on, if this thing confuses you, take a look again at what I mentioned before. But <laughs> I hope it doesn't confuse you. I'm really trying to come out as straight as I can and make it understandable. And I also added the first dark color in the area under the nose. Don't forget that, that's important too. Alright, we're almost done with the face. Now, let's just get the hair done. And I don't mean the hairstyle. <laughs> so what I did, I added the darker color, the first one at the bottom of the hair, and some behind the ear. And on the top, or maybe I should say in the middle, I added the first brighter color in sort of a zigzag fashion. It's just the way the hair reflects the light. Squares wouldn't get you anywhere. Here I had to fix the darker color, the first one, on the hair. Because it was too dark, so I toned it up a little bit. And also selected the, the brighter zigzag, copied and pasted it. Because it was too thin and I needed it a bit wider. And in the end, what I did, and what you want to do, is to select a really bright, almost white color on the grayscale, I mean on the total left side of the color picker thing I mentioned before, and make another zigzag thing inside the bright region. Again, this is just the way the hair reflects the light with almost white brightness. But not white, almost. And also, in the meantime, you might have noticed that I made the same thing on the face, in the bright areas. It's really just an additional feature, you don't have to do it, but I think it's nice. I mean, skin does reflect the light in this manner. If you look at this now, up close, it doesn't look good. But in the real life drawing, it will be all smudged together and it will probably look better. And don't forget that the game is really zoomed out, so the final look is totally different as the one zoomed in. So the second dark shade on the neck is the last thing I will talk about in this episode. Because it's already stretching out for too long and I guess I'll have to split it for two episodes. So thanks for watching guys, if you like this don't forget to leave a feedback and I guess I'll see you in the part 2 and hopefully in the future episodes where I might talk about whatever you want or whatever I might find interesting. But for now, I gotta go. See ya later guys.